Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to The Real Dish. This is the podcast where we serve up real conversations about food, health, and everything in between. I'm your host, Chef Maria, the Fit Foodie, and each week we'll explore the stories behind the food we eat, the latest nutrition trends, and the science behind healthy living for the whole you. We'll dive into topics like sustainable agriculture, mindful eating, culinary traditions from around the world, and practical tips for incorporating healthier habits into your daily life so you could go crush it. But we're not just here to talk about kale salads and superfoods, okay? Although we'll certainly cover things along those lines, The Real Dish is all about keeping it real and exploring the full spectrum of food and nutrition. No bull allowed. From the joy of indulging in your favorite comfort foods to navigating the challenges of healthy eating, dietary restrictions, and food allergies, because it is a minefield out there. So grab a seat at the table and let's dish out some food for thought together. You're finally going to find something to sink your teeth into right here on The Real Dish. Now grab a seat at the chef's table and let's dig in. You know, there are certain nutrients that we have to get from outside sources and omega-3s are one of them. They come from essential fatty acids and that word essential means they're critical to our health and performance. Now, there's a new way to get all the omega-3s that you need and it performs three times better than fish oil which makes it great for people who are plant-based. We're basically taking out the middleman that is fish. It comes from sustainably grown, clean and pure Icelandic ultra algae. So you get all the EPA and DHA that you need directly from the source of algae. It's called Orlo Nutrition. And it's literally the most sustainable omega-3 in the world. What I love about it too, is that they give you two self-tests and you, you send those tests in and they will let you know where your starting point is and where you are in terms of your omega-3 levels. So you can actually monitor how the supplement is doing for you. You're not just spending money on a supplement and hoping and praying that it's gonna do something, you'll actually see the results. Now, we need that EPA and DHA for so many things, for our heart, for our circulatory system, for a healthy immune and digestive system, for your brain health, it's so, so critical. And for my ladies especially, when we get to that certain age, we need it for hormone health. So I can't recommend it enough. Orlo Nutrition has really changed my life and I definitely feel the difference. And what's great is there's no fish burps. Fish burps are no bueno. So I'm excited for you to try Orlo Nutrition. You can get 10% off your purchase by using the code Chef Maria. that's C H E F. M A R E Y A at Orlo, that's O R L O, nutrition.com. And I know you're going to love it as much as I do. Make sure you check out Orlo Nutrition for sustainably produced from algae, no fish involved omega 3s. I know, I know this is going to be a game changer for you. Hey, everybody, welcome to The Real Dish. I'm your host, Chef Maria, the Fit Foodie. Today, we are diving into mercury, not the planet, but the potentially very harmful element that can really sabotage your health. And today, we're going to talk about the hidden dangers of mercury and its impact on your brain mostly and how it can actually be really harmful in terms of the impact on your risk of Alzheimer's and dementia. So this is a big one. Um, and the truth is a lot of people are exposed to mercury just from the fillings in their mouths. I mean, for years, we've been exposed to amalgam fillings, which uh, mercury is an element of those fillings. Uh, and that sits right in your mouth with direct exposure to your bloodstream. But let's talk a little bit about what mercury is, what it can do, 
how we're getting exposed to it through food, through the air, through water, and why we need to really pay attention to it for our brain health. And just uh, to kind of share with you, if you haven't been following me on social media, which I wish you would, at Chef Maria, uh, I announced that I just got my brain health coaching certification through Amen University, uh, founded by Dr. Daniel Amen, uh, the world's probably most renowned psychologist, psychiatrist. Um, and he's really created a whole practice around reading spec scans to understand what's going on in our brain. But I have such a deep family history of different brain disorders, whether it be bipolar or ADD. Um, even my, my mom even had a brain tumor, um, you know, depression, even Parkinson's and Alzheimer's that has come before me and my family. It's just so critical and important to me personally. And I know it's important to a lot of you out there who have expressed the same thing. So we're going to be talking a lot about brain and gut health as the days and months and years go by. But um, let's get, let's get back to mercury. So what is mercury? Mercury is a naturally occurring element and it exists in various forms. And, uh, and what makes it so insidious is that it appears in so many different things. I mean, it's used in many industrial applications like thermometers and fluorescent lights and batteries which unfortunately get disposed and, you know, the byproduct of that gets into our water, which is terrible. Um, but it can pose significant health risks to not only humans, but to wildlife also. Uh, and one of the most concerning aspects of mercury is its ability to accumulate in the food chain. So that directly affects aquatic environments where our fish and, uh, and, you know, aquaculture is grown. So when mercury is released into the air through industrial processes, or even natural sources like a volcanic eruption can transmit mercury into the land and sea, it eventually settles into those water bodies where it undergoes transformation into a compound called methylmercury, by microorganisms. And that methylmercury then bioaccumulates in fish and seafood. But where it gets really dangerous is the larger predatory species of seafood, where it can reach really high concentrations because that seafood is larger, it's living longer, and it's exposed to mercury in the water that much longer. Um, as far as the air is concerned, mercury is also released into the atmosphere through natural processes, again, um, like industrial processes, volcanic eruptions, forest fires, and human activities like coal combustion, waste incineration, etc. So once mercury is in the air, it's moving and it's traveling through air, space, and soil um, and water where it can commute accumulate in the food chain. So, you know, we have to really think about this. We have to think about where mercury is, which is everywhere. The fact that it's undergoing this transformation into methylmercury, which is very toxic and can bioaccumulate in fish and seafood, which we're eating, uh, and can also be transmitted through soil. Now let's talk about soil because, you know, I think a lot of people have this misnomer that, well, if it's in the soil, it doesn't really get to us. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth because contaminated soil poses risks to human health through that uptake by plants. So even the use of volcanic ash as a fertilizer or something that's nutrient dense that's giving back to the soil can actually be feeding uh, the methylmercury, which is not great. Um, and then consumer products. I mean, we've got so many things like fluorescent light bulbs and thermometers and batteries and even some cosmetics that women use can contain mercury. Um, and when these are disposed of improperly, it releases mercury back into the environment and contributes to human exposure. <laughs> so... Oh my gosh, it's overwhelming just even talking about this. 
Um, but I just think about it so much and, you know, I've thought about my makeup a lot more lately. I mean, let's just ladies talk about this for a second. It's really important as our skin is our largest organ to know that we get exposed to all of these potent neurotoxins, not just through what we're eating, but what we're putting on our bodies. And uh, it's really important to to check your makeup drawer out. I have really started paying attention to that and buying um, only natural makeup. And it's sad because there's not a lot of lines out there, but I think the more demand, the more pressure it will put on the industry to create cleaner products. So if you go to your, your local, um, you know, beauty counter, ask them for the cleaner products. And I've started using some that I really like, and I can share those with you if you DM me uh, on my Instagram um, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll refer you to my beauty regimen. But the, the point is we can get exposed to mercury in a lot of ways. Now, let's talk about why it's important that we avoid mercury because the health risks are many. You know, exposure to high levels of mercury can lead to a range of health problems, including neurotoxicity. I mean, mercury is a potent neurotoxin, which means it can cause damage to nerve cells and disrupt normal brain function. And sadly, it has a particular affinity to the central nervous system, including the brain, where it, it doesn't just hit at once. It's accumulating over time and it sits in that fatty tissue of the brain and accumulates. So years down the road, you may experience the effect of it just from that buildup. Um, it can also cause oxidative stress. And how it does that is mercury exposure can lead to increased production of reactive oxygen. So it's the acronym is ROS in the brain, resulting in that oxidative stress. And that can damage your neurons and other brain cells, which leads to inflammation and impaired brain function. You see how I'm building the case towards dementia and uh, and Alzheimer's as being a, a part, you know, of the dementia equation. But, you know, you're damaging neurons and you're creating inflammation in the body and the brain. You can see how this buildup over time can be really, really dangerous. Um, so we want our neurons to be, you know, firing and signaling the way they're supposed to. We want our brain tissue to be healthy. And we know that mercury has a tendency to to target the brain um, because it likes to sit in the fatty tissue and your brain is 60% fat when you remove that water content. Um, and also, you know, we know that there is a, an association between mercury exposure and Alzheimer's. It's a topic of ongoing research. So while there is evidence suggesting that potential link, the exact mechanism of how it is transmitted or progressed maybe isn't fully understood, but I think we can put the puzzle pieces together. We know it loves fatty tissue. We know it loves to attach to neurons because it's a neurotoxin. So I think we can pretty much put a good bet on why that's leading to uh, syndromes like Alzheimer's, which is just ravaging families worldwide. I mean, it's so sad. Recently, we heard about Wendy Williams um, and her form of dementia that she's contending with, and she's only 59 years old, you guys. Um, Bruce Willis also has the same type of dementia. So um, it's something we really need to pay attention to. Now, let's talk about why we are getting this type of exposure from what we're eating, from what we're drinking, what we're being exposed to, um, and why, you know, it can affect everything from your brain to even your cardiovascular system. You know, there's even research that's suggesting that mercury exposure can also impair your blood and your brain, your, um, cardiovascular system, uh, function. So it can increase blood pressure. It can promote hardening of the arteries, you know, so this is not just a brain thing. This is uh, a real whole body thing. So how do you know 
if you've been exposed to mercury in a dangerous way? Well, there are a lot of symptoms that you could potentially be going through. And look, I'm not a doctor. I'm just reading off a list of known published symptoms. So while it could be mercury exposure, it could be other things. It's important to consult with your doctor. And if you suspect that you do have mercury exposure, there are tests that can be run that uh, can identify and nail that down. So here are some of them. Tremors numbness, tingling in the hands, feet, or around the mouth, impaired coordination or balance, difficulty walking or speaking, memory problems, cognitive impairment, which is, uh, you know, brain impairment, mood swings or irritability, anxiety or depression. It can even affect your gastrointestinal system with nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea or constipation, lost of a- loss of ap- appetite, and the list goes on and on and on. I mean, coughing, shortness of breath, even skin rash or irritation, excessive sweating, um, increased urination, kidney damage, high blood pressure, chest pain, fatigue, metallic taste in the mouth. I hear that a lot um, as a you know symptom, mercury being uh, you know an element that can create that metallic taste even hair loss and weight loss. You know, so these are wide and vast symptoms and they may overlap with other health conditions, but it's important to know that even chronic level exposure, low level exposure over time may result in these subtle symptoms that develop and gradually grow. So if you're a person where you're like, you know, notice that over time I've had this, but in the past, you know, month or two, it's gotten like really bad, or I really notice it severely. That is something that is very typical with mercury exposure, just builds over time. Now, let's take a deep breath before we get panicky and think, well, great, now I've got this, now I'm going to get Alzheimer's. No, that's not necessarily the case. The good news is that there are steps that you can take to minimize not only your exposure moving forward, but to really protect your health and um, and purge your body, get rid of these toxins from your body. So there is a way to do that. So listen in and let's dive into some of these important tips. It's not from a needle, a pill, or a prescription. My favorite biohack for managing pain, helping gut health, managing mood, energizing my body from head to toe, and the perfect glow up is red light and infrared therapy. I cannot tell you enough about how much I love it. And my go-to is Loombox. It's a portable red light and infrared therapy box. And it's so portable, you can take it with you. I travel with it everywhere. It is literally indispensable. And just 10 to 12 minutes a day is really all you need. I've seen a huge difference in my complexion. Uh, It helps with fine lines and with uh, skin clarity and has helped a lot of people that have skin issues. So if you have eczema or psoriasis, it's something that you want to take a look at. It's also tested by NASA. So there's a lot of data and science. It's not just one of these things where people are like, oh yeah, it works, or, you know, I don't know. It's actually proven with multiple hundreds of scientific papers. And what I love about Loombox is it's so much more powerful than other light therapy type boxes or solutions. And you are going to get the most mileage out of this because it's something that you can use for so many different things. Managing pain, I mean, when I was recovering from my torn ACL and now my latest accident with my dog running into me full speed, uh, all 75 pounds of him into my knees, um, it's something that I use all the time. I also use it to manage pain and inflammation after my workouts. And basically, it's my therapy every single day, especially during the long winter months where we don't get that much sunlight. You got to try it. That's all I'm going to say. I can't recommend it enough. 
and you can get up to $250 off of Loombox with my code Chef Maria. You'll just go to the Loombox, that's the L U M E B O X dot com forward slash Chef Maria, or just go to the Loombox.com and use Chef Maria at checkout for your discount. I'm telling you, it is the investment that will pay back in dividends for your health. I love it. Have you ever wondered, is rinsing my produce with the water that comes out of the sink that I don't even drink enough to really clean it? Well, then you're one of the smartest people I know. Because you're absolutely right. It's not enough. That's why we created the only all-natural and patented line of food wash and wipes. And it's called Eat Cleaner. It's tasteless, odorless, and lab tested. And it removes up to 99.9% of the residue that water can't, including pesticides, wax, soil, and junk that can carry bacteria that can really make you sick. Plus, we formulated it to help extend the shelf life of your fresh produce too, and that'll save you money. When your berries are lasting up to 10, 12 days, you know that's a good thing. It helps your produce last up to five times longer using a natural blend of fruit acids and antioxidants. So there's no chemicals, it's just clean, eating fun. And this can help save your family an average of over $500 per year. Make it easy on yourself, reduce waste, and get that fruit and veggies into your body, where it's gonna do you a lot of good and not in the trash. Check us out, eatcleaner.com, or head to our Amazon store at amazon.com forward slash eatcleaner. Now, one of the very, very important things that you want to be aware of is how we get exposed to mercury. And one of the big things that contain, you know, that contain a lot of mercury are these high mercury fish, these fish that tend to be larger that have longer term exposure because they're living in the sea for longer. And that methyl mercury is basically infiltrating their systems because of what they're eating. So the number one tip is to limit your consumption of high mercury fish. What are some of the highest mercury fish out there? Well, shark, swordfish, king mackerel, and tilefish are the biggest ones. Um, and I know that swordfish is something that I see, you know, shark and king mackerel and tilefish not as readily available, I would say, but I definitely see swordfish out there quite a bit. And I know I see it at my local, you know, grocery stores quite often. And I know a lot of people that eat it. So it's really important that you look out for that and that you limit your consumption to no more than, you know, maybe once a month um, and maybe even less than that, because there are other seafood that are considered low mercury, like salmon and shrimp and sardines and anchovies. Um, these are smaller fish that are, you know, much, much lower in mercury. Even tuna is something that we've seen now because tuna, you know, unless it's a smaller variety of tuna, but the larger tuna can get quite large and can be a carrier of that mercury too. And I know that that's something that is in a lot of people's diets on a regular basis. You probably want to limit your tuna intake to no more than once or twice a month as well. So watch out for that, Um, especially pregnant women, nursing mothers, and young children, um, where your risk becomes that much higher. You're passing that along if you're pregnant, um, you know, to your 
little embryo baby, um, nursing mothers, you're passing that through your breast milk and young children, just because of your body size, um, become much more at risk to that mercury exposure. So be real careful of those high mercury fish, uh, contaminants and opt for the smaller fish. Um, and let me just give a shout out to anchovies and sardines and mackerel for a second because, um, I grew up with them and I love a good white anchovy. Don't knock it till you try it. White anchovies are very different than the very smelly dark anchovies. So try out anchovies, try out sardines. They are delicious baked. One of the dishes that my grandfather used to make that I absolutely adored was sardines baked in a spicy tomato sauce with paper thin slices of potato and onion. So divine, so delicious. Um, and you know, it's fun to try new things. I think and these are really common fish to the Mediterranean. The, the, benefits of things like, you know, these fatty fish also is that you're getting fish that's rich in omega-3 fatty acids um, that have DHA and EPA. Your brain is largely DHA. So eating foods that feed that DHA, uh, you know, what you eat is becoming part of you. You are what you eat. So I want a nice, fat, healthy brain. How about you? Uh, and you can get that with these types of seafood. So watch out for the big you know, the big fish, big fish doesn't necessarily mean good fish and opt for the smaller. Trout can even be a great option as well, um, especially if it's wild river caught. All right. What else do we need to be careful of? Rice. Now, in some regions, rice grown in mercury contaminated soil or irrigated with mercury contaminated water can significantly elevate your levels of mercury. So you want to be real careful of your consumption of rice and rice-based products. Yes. And I know this is a staple food in countries around the world. And certainly we eat a fair amount of rice here, but you want to try and really clean your rice well. Um, that means rinsing it, rinsing it again, and rinsing it again. I use a little bit of Eat Cleaner. It's a product that I created with my dad. We recently sold the company, but I'm still a big user of the product. Um, and I cleanse the rice with Eat Cleaner. I'll spray it, let it sit for two minutes, and then give it a quick rinse. And that cleanse of using a surfactant-based cleaner versus just trying to clean it with water helps to really chelate what's potentially on the surface. Now that doesn't mean that it's getting rid of everything that the rice has absorbed into, you know, the shaft of the rice, into the, you know, interior core of the rice, but it can help to minimize your exposure of what's on the surface. And just, you know, it's always a good idea to soak your rice uh, for a little while before you actually cook it. Um, so be careful of your rice exposure, maybe limit your rice a little bit, just because again, it's sitting in that water, um, and definitely opt for organic or sprouted rice where they're controlling the, uh, environment and the type of water, uh, that they're using and using filtered water, et cetera. So be mindful of your rice intake. And I would say other grains too, because all grains have the potential to be exposed, um, and you know, the other big bucket besides high mercury seafood and rice is water. You know, we are over 60% water. We're closer to 70% water and we're supposed to be drinking half our body weight in ounces of water every single day. So if environmental exposure to mercury includes the water that we drink, we've got to be careful of that. And avoid, you know, water that may be unclean. Now, you can always check your local county and check out your water reports, and those should be available to you in full disclosure. But just realize that our water is a harbor for environmental toxins and contamination. So, using a simple filtration system 
uh, can be very, very effective. You don't need to buy a bunch of bottled water and contribute to more plastic waste in the environment. It's just an insidious cycle of toxins that go back into the water that we drink. Um, but using a, a filter, a filtration system, um, a filtered water pitcher, uh, I think that's probably one of the best investments we can all make. And likewise, even looking at your shower heads, you know, again, our bodies, our skin is our largest organ. So what is your body absorbing from the water that's coming out of your shower? You know, these are all things that we need to be aware of. We just recently, um, and I'm embarrassed to say recently, but recently replaced our shower heads because it is something important. My son's got really sensitive skin and he was having some rashing. Um, and I was just like, man, we should have done this a long time ago, but you know, we've better late than never. I always say we've got to do everything that we can to minimize our risk and, uh, prevent that mercury exposure. So, um, it's just really super important that you do a check of your own health, your own, you know, house, what you're potentially being exposed to. If you've got fillings, I would definitely speak to your dentist. Um, this is a big one for a lot of people uh, and long-term mercury exposure from fillings. I was just listening to a podcast from Dr. Mark Hyman, who uh, I had the good fortune of working with to develop the program, The Daniel Plan. And he was talking about how these amalgam fillings can be just so harmful. And when people have had their fillings replaced, how almost instantaneously these exposures have been, you know, like not only mitigated, but then people have gotten a lot better. So it's important that as we think about, you know, what do you do to heal? How do you then kind of move on from all of this exposure? What can you do? So um, before we get into detoxing, I want to just take a quick moment and give a shout out to one of our sponsors, and that is 1% Kitchen. And 1% is a meal prep service that I've been using recently. And let me tell you, although I love doing meal prep and teaching meal prep, I mean, sometimes I just don't have time. Um, if I'm traveling or, you know, just with a busy family, we've got five mouths to feed, you know, it's just nice to have a fill in sometimes for my meal prep. And I am on a pretty specific eating plan because I'm training for my next bikini fitness competition. Yay. Um, I'm super stoked about it, by the way. But anyways, so eating is incredibly important. And the quality of food that you get, the um, the macronutrient balance that you get, um, you know, just making sure that you're getting a wide variety of color on your plate. These are all things that 1% delivers. And I've had the good fortune of speaking to the founder, Rob, and he's just such a stand-up person with a great miss mission. And I really love, you know, entrepreneurs with a lot of heart. And he's got a lot of heart and uh, has come from a not so easy background and has really overcome. So it's pretty darn cool. And I love supporting companies like that. So check out 1% Fitness and uh, I've got a code for 30% off your first order. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's a, that's, come on, 30% off. That's an opportunity you can't pass up. So make sure you use my code, Chef Maria. And I've got a link to their website in the show notes that you can check out and use. So 30% off, give it a try. There's lots of different options, really delicious flavors. Um, I was blown away by how good the chicken chili verde was. I mean, I practically licked the whole little container that it came into. And just chef hack, uh, something that I found when you try this out, try heating it up in a skillet. Um, if you have time and you don't want to pop it in the microwave, just do yourself a favor and pop it into the skillet. 
it, it tastes really, really like you've just made a meal at home. So big fan, check out 1% Kitchen and use my code Chef Maria for 30% off. So let's get back to what you can do to rid your body of these potentially toxic chemicals. So there's a few things um, that you can do. Obviously, minimizing your exposure is number one. So make sure that you really try and lower your exposure of eating these high mercury seafood items, of the rice exposure that a lot of people get. Um, certainly from getting it from water sources and definitely take a look at the inside of your mouth and see if, you know, all those fillings have maybe contributed to those problems. Um, the next thing that you can take a look at is a detoxification process. So what ends up happening is mercury, uh, as it, you know, loves to kind of sit in the brain and in the neurons and in the fatty tissue will also sit in your liver and your kidneys. So doing a detox is something that I often recommend to people. Now, there are lots of different protocols for detoxing, um, and you can check with your doctor on that. They also have ways to do that. But something that I always recommend to people is a product from Garden of Life, and it's a seven-day detox. Um, I'll link that product to the show notes here. You can get 20% off with my code, and that is gift of health at gardenoflife.com. And by doing the detox, it helps to also detox your filtration organs like your kidney, your liver, and your pancreas. So um, check that out. And I, you know, I always say do a detox every quarter. Every change of the seasons is a great opportunity to do a detox. So that's something that you can take. And uh, it's a natural product that helps to gently basically help elimination, help your um, large intestine, your colon, your, um, you know, your gut, everything reset along with your filtration organs. Um, another thing that you can look into with your doctor is something called chelation therapy. And chelation is a process where um, you're, you're given substances that bind to those metals like mercury and other heavy metals so that you excrete them. Um, similar to what a, you know, natural detox would be, but this is something that is a little bit more, I'll just call it hardcore. And uh, chelation therapy is always something that's administered by a healthcare provider. Um, so it's something that you would need to consult your doctor with and probably would come after a mercury test, um, you know, a blood test to see where your mercury levels are at. Okay, when it comes to cooking and doing it in a way that is healthy for your fit life, there's a few things that we have to keep in mind. Number one, is it functional? Number two, is it clean? Meaning, does it contain any of those yucky coatings that they add to cookware nowadays, especially the nonstick kind? We don't need that, we don't want that. And number three, is it pretty? Because hey, if it's aesthetic, it's gonna make us feel pretty good when we cook on it. And that's why I am totally digging hex clad cookware. Talk about the most gorgeous cookware you will ever use. Plus, it's totally functional and healthy to use. Hex clad's patented hybrid cookware brings performance of the stainless steel, the durability of cast iron, and the convenience of nonstick all in one. That, my friends, is Michelin level standards with cleanup convenience because when we're cooking at home, we don't want to be scrubbing dishes all day long either. So now you can unleash your potential in the kitchen without any limits. What I love about it, that nonstick hybrid technology coupled with excellent temperature control, you've got to be able to temper your temperature to get that great sear and to do the nice poaches. Easy care, so it's gonna clean up easy and easy cleaning. 
all of that with the additional benefit of being free from toxic coatings and having a lifetime warranty. This is the cookware you're gonna use for life, my friends. So it's time to take a little assessment of the cookware that you have. If you have your hand-me-down Teflon cookware, it's time to throw it out and invest in a nice new set and Hexclad is gonna deliver on its promise with that lifetime warranty. I can't recommend it enough. I'm totally infatuated with mine. Can I say that? Infatuated? And I know you're gonna be too. So make sure you head over to hexclad.com forward slash Chef Maria and you'll get up to 30% off your new cookware. Start the year off right and cook with delight. How about that for a rhyme? No, seriously though. Use my code Chef Maria at hexclad.com. That's H E X C L A D.com, and you'll get up to 30% off your purchase. You will not be disappointed. So that's something that you can look into as well. Um, there's also ways that you can kind of naturally detox or chelate with sulfur containing foods and supplements. So sulfur containing compounds like glutathione can help bind to mercury and help your body excrete it. So sulfur rich foods like garlic, onions, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, um, even eggs can support that detox. Um, you can also take um, ALA, alpha lipoic acid, which can help boost glutathione, uh, glutathione levels and support that natural detoxification. Um, you can also take NAC. So these are all supplements that can help uh, along with the natural foods that contain high levels of sulfur. It goes without saying that hydration is critical. Hydration is a key way to allow your body to naturally detoxify. And so many of us are walking around dehydrated, but every function of your body, the, the energy that it's taking me right now to talk to you and the energy it's taking to listen to me is requiring hydration for your cellular function. Um, so staying well hydrated, drinking plenty of water throughout the day to help flush toxins out, including mercury from the body is really critical, um, keeping your blood flowing. And if you are averse to water, I mean, you probably heard me if you've been following me for a little while, but make your water fun. Okay. Add a little bit of fresh fruit to it. Add some citrus, add a little splash of sparkling water, um, squeeze a little bit of, oh, I don't know, something fun, maybe just a touch of pomegranate juice, just a little bit to flavor it. Um, you know, make some fun ice cubes where they look pretty. So when you look at it, you're like, ah, oh, I feel like I'm at the spa, you know, a little cucumber and some herbs, just get the water in your body. And a little bit of sea salt can help with your hydration too. Certainly there are a lot of fun, you know, um, hydration supplements out there that you can add uh, to your water, but just a simple thing to do is just a little bit of sea salt. So um, getting hydrated throughout the day and keeping your water close by is really important so that you're always drinking. And then, uh, you know, sauna. I am such a big fan of infrared. Um, infrared is a wonderful way to detox and to, again, get at that mitochondrial level of detoxification um, in a way that you can't do from a normal sauna. So infrared is really unique in that sense. So I like to get into the infrared at least once a week. And I even have a portable little unit. Um, and I, you know, I just can't even tell you guys like that loom box goes with me everywhere. Uh, and if you don't know about loom box, you got to check it out. Um, make sure you check out the the show notes for a link so that you can try out Loombox as well at a very, very big discount, over $260 off. But uh, it's a little very high-powered infrared, 
and red light therapy box that I use almost daily and take with me everywhere. So if you can't sit in a sauna, you don't have access to one, then uh, that little portable uh, infrared is really, really powerful and helpful. So all of those, so dietary modifications, sauna, proper hydration, foods and supplements that contain sulfur, chelation, and just minimizing your exposure to all of these mercury-heavy foods and water is critical to your overall health. Mercury can wreak some havoc, y'all. And the thing that scares me and should scare you is the symptoms might not be obvious immediately. They can build up over time and all of a sudden you have a toxic soup on your hands. So do a, a, a self-assessment, check out the symptoms that I mentioned, see if you think you might have it. If you all of a sudden have you know, something unexplained, it's always a good idea to check with your doctor and have your blood you know, your blood checked, um, to make sure you haven't experienced, you know, extreme levels of exposure, but we can all do our part to take an active role in our health. Don't wait for a crisis. You know, this is the beautiful thing about technology and knowledge in this day and age. You can listen to a podcast like this and get information that you never have heard anywhere else. So that's why I'm inviting you to subscribe. Subscribe to The Real Dish. Right now, just hit the subscribe button. All I'm ever going to promise you is great information that's going to help your lifestyle and help the people that you love around you. Forget about the endless scrolling and the people that you may or may not trust as experts. I've been around in the health and wellness world for over 30 years. I'm a certified brain health coach, a nutritionist, and a trained chef, and I'm going to give it to you straight up. It's the real dish. So I hope you'll always grab a seat at the chef's table and invite your friends. If you enjoyed this episode, would you please share this with your friends and followers and make sure to leave a five-star review so other people can find us too. So until next time, this is the real dish. And I'm going to leave you with this. What you're eating is eating you. I'll see you next time.